Hi friends, today we are going to discuss about disorders of perception. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry at Nimans, Bangalore. Today we are going to discuss about perception. What is perception? Perception may be defined as a process by individuals receive, recognize, organize, interpret sensory information in order to give meaning to the environment. That basically, every human being perceives the environment through five important senses. That is eyes, ears, nose, that is taste by tongue and touch. However, there are other important sensations like proprioceptive sensations, temperature, pain. They also may be considered as a part of a touch, but they are also part of perceiving the environment. Why it is very essential? We have to know disorders of perception because perception is an important component under mental status examination. In the out of seven important components, sixth component is perception. How to assess perception? Perception, disorders of perception are assessed by collating information from all possible sources, family members, friends, at workplace, various other people, significant people can give information about the patient. Ask about whether the patient has any hallucinatory behavior, talking to self, smiling to self, gesturing or saying that somebody is standing in front of him where nobody can else see them. So these kinds of hallucinatory behavior collect the information. And another important is interviewing the patient. All these important sources will give whether the patient had any perceptual abnormalities. Who should do the assessment? Of course, psychiatrist, junior residents under psychiatry, primary care doctors, psychologist, social worker and nurses who are trained in this area should be able to do this. Let's under understand disorders of perception. Disorders of perception have been classified into two important things. Disorders of distortions and deceptions. So let's understand distortions. Distortion here, the perception is there, but however, there is a distortion in the perception. For example, in the intensity, the intensity may be very less, that is hyposthesia, or the intensity may be bright, hyperesthesia. The color, color of an object becomes very intense, even if it is normal to other person. Here he looks at very bright red or bright green color. They are called as hyperesthesia. Or else, certain color becomes very dull. They are all hyposthesia. So the intensity, the way the perception is seen, so they are there. Quality, sometimes the color may change from one to another or else the whole perception will be in a different format of color. So they are all in the quality. If there is a distortion, that is also one of them. Spatial formation, spatial forms of disorder. Sometimes the objects will be seen small or big. They are called as micropsia or macropsia. So, though these, these distortions are seen as a part of psychopathology, they do not have much meaning. But however, if you look into the older studies, early signs of schizophrenia, the patient have reported in the early symptoms, before they developed frank schizophrenia, they used to have this micropsia or macropsia. That means the distortion in the spatial form of the object, where the early signs of schizophrenia has been noted. But however, at this point of time, these micropsia or macropsia or quality change or hyper hyposthesia or hyperesthesia, these are not does not have any diagnostic validity at this point of time. But however, the deceptions have a very important role to play. They are illusions, hallucinations, and pseudo hallucinations. Let's understand this: hallucinations, pseudo hallucinations, and illusions. Hallucinations are basically perception without stimuli. This is what the Jasper has given a very good uh, definition and a squirrel has also has given a e squirrel has given a very good definition. A simple definition is there is a perception but there is no stimuli in any five senses or pseudo hallucination. Pseudo hallucinations are nothing but false hallucination but they are in the subjective space. They are not so vivid, not so clear, not so, they lack substantiality and they can the person can control them. And they have a complete insight that they are belong to them and they are out of their mind process. They are all pseudo hallucination. 
This is one of the commonest question which is asked in the exams. The differentiation between hallucination and pseudo hallucination. First and the foremost is clarity, reality and substantiality is very common in hallucination and hallucination comes from the objective space. Whereas pseudo hallucination from the subjective space, clarity is not there and the vividness is not there, borders are not vivid, complete control is there, insight will be there. The control may be to some extent very varying but however in hallucination they are not under control. Illusions are nothing but misinterpretation of the stimuli. Let's understand hallucination. Hallucinations are seen in five different modalities, commonly auditory, that is hearing of voices, visual hallucination, seeing, tactile hallucination, feeling somebody is touching them, gustatory hallucination, taste, olfactory hallucination, smell. So when you give an explanation of the hallucination, you have to describe the experience of the patient in the patient own words, like verbatim report has to be given. And when you start that, you have to say, the patient have these experiences in a clear conscious when he is awake, not in the night or not in the drowsiness state. In a clear consciousness, it has to happen. And you have to give a verbatim report, clear consciousness. Which modality? Is it auditory? Is it visual? Is it olfactory? Or is it taste or a touch? Modality, whether the hallucination are single or multiple. If he is, if he is hearing voices, a single person speaking or multiple person speaking or if he's seeing people whether he's seeing single person or many people that is single or multiple control whether he's able to control them or he's unable to control them whether they are in the subjective space or in the objective space subjective space means it is pseudo hallucination if it is objective space it's of course it is hallucination duration frequency since how many days frequency it, it's almost there in the whole day or it's only half an hour one hour when at what time it is there whether they are pleasant or unpleasant. Sometimes some auditory hallucinations, some hallucinations may be soothing, somebody will be derogatory, somebody, some voices will be commanding, some voice will, voices will be threatening. So depending what, what kind of whether they are pleasant, unpleasant, whether they are continuous or intermittent, whether they are verbal and non-verbal. If the patient has auditory hallucination, he can hear voices speaking or else he can hear music also. He can hear bells ringing or animals May like dog barking or birds chirping when nobody else is listening to them, familiar voices or unfamiliar voices. And the next is important is types of auditory hallucination. First person, second person and third person. First person is the person hearing his own voices. It is whenever he thinks his voices are, his thoughts are spoken aloud. They are called as first person. Second person is the voices directly talking to the patient. They are commanding directly telling the patient or commenting directly to the patient. They are all second person. Third person is the two voices are discussing about the patient. The patient is the third party here. So they are called as third person. And also what is the response to the hallucination? Whether the patient start arguing with them or else the patient thinks that somebody else is producing these voices and goes and starts fighting with them. Whether the patient has insight or not. So these all these explanation has to be given with regard to hallucination. Now let's understand what are the different types of special hallucinations. First one, is, first one is hypnagogic hallucination. It's a normal physiological process which is being experienced by all of us. When you are falling asleep, suddenly you feel that you are falling into your well and you suddenly have a startled reflux and you wake up. They are called as hypnagogic hallucination. Hypnopompic is when you are waking up from the sleep, you get an hallucination. They are called as hypnopompic hallucination. But another very important is imperative hallucination. If a patient has an auditory hallucination, which gives him some commands, some instruction, but the patient may or may not oblige to carry out. They are called as imperative hallucination. Imagine the patient has a commanding hallucination telling him to do something like to write something or to throw something, but the patient does not want to do that. They are called as imperative hallucinations. Thought echo or thought or what we call it as thought sonorization. Here, the patient's own thoughts are spoken aloud. He doesn't know, but whenever he thinks, the thoughts are spoken. So they are called as thought echo or sonorization, sex, sexual hallucination. Here, the tactile hallucination occurring in the genital area. I do remember one of the patient said that he feels somebody is doing, touching his genitalias. And another one patient used to say that she feels penis in her vagina. And she know, but she's, she doesn't know where it, how it happens. And nobody is there. Even in the public places, she feels it.
So that tactile hallucination is very disturbing. They are all sexual hallucination occurring in the genital area. Formication. This is common in uh, cocaine users. They are also called as cocaine bugs. They are the animal crawling all over the body or the insect crawling over the body. They are called as formication. But however, there is another important two phenomena. Internal delusional zoopathy. Here, the, insult, the insects are crawling inside the body. Here, the patient feels that inside my, inside, inside my skin, there is worms are moving around. They are called as internal delusional zoopathy. External delusional zoopathy here, insects crawling outside the body. He feels that above the skin, it is there. Above the skin, this, they are seen, but they can't be seen. They are very minute. They are all special hallucination, formication, internal delusional zoopathy, external delusional zoopathy. Functional hallucination. This is a very commonest question which is asked in the exam. They may ask here, what is functional hallucination? Here, a stimulus causes hallucination. Of course, the definition of hallucination is there is a perception without stimuli. But here, a stimuli causes an hallucination. Both hallucination and stimulus are perceived here. For example, the patient says that he can, whenever the tap is on, water tap is on, when the, wa the water starts falling down and the tap water, running tap water, he can hear voices from them. Then he will say, the God is trying to speak through the tap water. So, that is where it is called as functional hallucination. Another example, the patient will say, whenever the clock is ticking, whenever the noise is heard, he hears the voices of somebody speaking to him. Then he will say, the, somebody is trying to put something in the clock and the clock is speaking to me. So, these are called as functional hallucination. Here, there is a stimuli and there is an hallucination. Stimuli may be either water tap running or else the clock ticking. But at the same time here, he hears voices. They are all called as functional hallucination. Coming to reflex hallucination. Reflex hallucination is a morbid synesthesia. Your stimulus in one sensory field produces hallucination in the other field. So, this is commonly seen in cannabis intoxication. But however, sometimes rarely seen in very uh, morbid schizophrenia or organic conditions, delirium, they can see. For example, patient sees bird flying and he hears voices here. He sees for a far distance the bird is going but whenever he sees the bird flying he can hear voices or else looking at his neighbor he gets a bad smell. Whenever there is a neighbor goes there in front of him he will get a olfactory hallucination. So that means a visual person going there as a stimuli produces hallucination in olfactory. That is called as reflux hallucination. Stimuli in one modality produces hallucination in the other senses modality. So, this is what is reflex hallucination. Coming to extra campaign hallucination. Extra campaign hallucination is an hallucination occurring the outside the limit of sensory field. For example, this is commonly seen in uh, complex partial seizure. Here the patient will say and also sometimes in schizophrenia. Here the patient will say, I can hear like for example, patient is sitting in Bangalore. And he says, I can, he can hear voices of three or four persecutors sitting in Canada and discussing with him or talking about him. And the person who is sitting in Bangalore can hear him without any uh, electronic aid. He can directly hear them, they are discussing with him. So that is called as extra campaign hallucination. Or else, from here he can see people what they are doing in New York. From Bangalore he can see them. So beyond the visual perception he is able to see. So that is called as extra campaign hallucination, which is commonly seen in auditory hallucination. If the patient clearly says that I can hear what his wife is doing in from another city without even having any internal, without any mobile phone or anything. So they are called as extra campaign hallucination. The other important is autoscopy or what we call it as phantom mirror image. Here patient sees himself in external space. That means patient says he can see himself. He can see himself walking around. So they are called as autoscopy which is commonly uh, seen in schizophrenia and he recognizes that it is himself, he is seeing him. Negative autoscopy, patient does not see himself in the mirror. Whenever he sees in the mirror, he feels that there is nobody. He can't see his image, that is negative autoscopy. Another one is internal autoscopy. Patient can see his internal organs. Whenever he looks at it, he says that he will be explaining, I can see my heart, I can see my stomach. but. It may not be exactly to the anatomy, but he will give a rough idea whatever he knows. They are called as internal autoscopy. 
coming to experiential hallucination. These hallucinations are produced by the epilepsy and which is commonly in com uh, com complex partial seizure. Sense of presence. This is a classically seen in various uh, schizophrenia patient. Here the patient feels that somebody is standing behind him. Or else, whenever he is alone in a room, he feels that somebody else also is there in the room and he will search them, but he can't feel, see them. But he still feels that there is somebody in his room with him whenever he is alone. Or else, he feels that somebody is standing behind him and he can't see him. Whenever he turns him, he turns back or he vanishes. That is sense of presence is another, another kind of one of the hallucination. Fantastic uh, hallucination. This is also called as dissociative hallucination. It is called as multimodal sensory hallucination. You can see the hallucination, you can hear the hallucination, you can touch the hallucination. So it is a multimodal sensory hallucination. Another important uh, diagnostic formula, formula of schizophrenia which is seen is kinesthetic hallucination. Here the patient will clearly say he can feel somebody cutting his brain. Nobody can feel the brain if it is cut. Or else somebody will say his guts or his intestines are being cut. Nobody can feel that sensation because there is no sensory, uh, what we call it as nerves on the uh, intestine. But he still feels that somebody is cutting his intestine. Or else he can feel the blood flowing in his vessels. And he will give a clear explanation that the blood is now flowing like this, like this. The direction also he gives, which is unlikely, which is not possible. They are all called as kinesthetic hallucination. Coming to haptic hallucination is the experience of touch as an hallucination which is commonly seen as a tactile hallucination also. To conclude, my dear friends, perception is an important component of mental status examination. Visual hallucinations are common in usually organic conditions. Auditory hallucinations are common in functional, functional disorders like schizophrenia or mood disorders. But that doesn't mean that they are exclusive. A visual hallucination can be seen in even in schizophrenia. Auditory hallucination can be seen in organic condition. But however, if the person has these hallucinations or what we call it as perceptual abnormalities, they are required to be investigated. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. If you like this video, please do subscribe to your channel. Stay safe.